Today we're going to be talking about SD cards and SD cards are super vital for any camera that you guys use specifically for the Sony system because that's what I'm currently using. So we're going to be covering uh, the SD cards for the FX3, the FX30, the A7S3 and the A7 IV as well as the A7R5 just to name a few. So I obviously have a lot of different cards. I'll try and show them to you. There you go so you can have a look. These cards are CF Express Type A, V90s, V60s, V30s, and this is just a regular SD card adapter for the micro SD cards. Now, the reason I wanted to discuss this is because people get confused quite a lot with which cards they should use for their camera. I want to talk specifically for the FX3, FX30, and A7S3 because they do have the 4K120. Now, on the FX3 and the A7S3, it does do 4K all eye in 120. Now, the all eye codec is really important, and I want to talk about that first to get that out of the way. Now, all of these cards, except this card right here, which is a CF Express Type A, will not be able to record in 4K all eye. However, there is a catch. You still can record 4K 120 in the V90, However, you won't be do, able to do it in all I. So you can record in the XAVCS format, which is honestly what I use, and I kind of recommend everyone to be using that because it is such a great codec. The all I, while it's a great codec, it does do double the storage of what XAVCS does with little to no quality difference. The only time you might notice a difference with the all I, all intra, is if you're doing a lot of quick panning shots where you're filming the F1 or you know super sports race cars, something like that where it has a lot of motion, then all I will be better. But in most scenarios, about 95% of scenarios, XAVCS will serve you perfectly fine. Now, with that being said, I wanna introduce to you my latest edition. It is this card right here. This is the SanDisk Extreme Pro 512 gigabytes storage. It has 200 megabits uh, per second read speed, and this is a V30. I'm gonna try and show you guys, there you go. That is a V30. Guys, this beautiful SD card cost me $100. That's right, 100 Australian dollars, guys, for 512 gigs of RAM for a V30. Now, to, to get my point across, this can record in 50p, 25p in XAVCS without any issues, guys. The only time you're gonna have issues with 50p is if you record in the SNQ. However, if you record in the regular formats of XAVCS in 50p, even in 10-bit, you will not have any issues with this card, guys, at all. Now, let's move on to the next one. Something like the V90 is gonna help as well, but it's not gonna make a biggest difference as you think. This will let you record in the 120 format. However, and if I'm not mistaken, it still will not re let you record in the 120 XAVC all I. This is still not the card. You will need the CF Express card. These are pricey. These are more expensive. They have obviously a faster read speed. This is 300 megabits read speed, while uh, the SanDisk Extreme Pro was 200. This is a V90. These aren't exactly cheap, guys. The Kingston brand are a great brand, but I do highly recommend them, but it will cost you a few hundred dollars for these. And this is 256 gig instead of 512. Now, let me show you the CF Express Type A. This one right here. Uh, let me see if I get this in focus. Look at this little fella. There we go. Now this fella right here is a very specific brand that you guys probably have not seen before. <laughs> it is uh, no longer available. It's called Da Jing Yu. I don't know if I'm slaughtering that or not. It's 256 gigs. It can record in 4K and 8K. 4K and 120 and 8K and 30p. Max readout speed of 800 megabits per second. And in 8K, it's 700 megabits per second, guys. This is what a Type A card is. Beautiful card. And guys, these guys went actually bankrupt from what I heard. They they just, yeah, they, they had to liquidate everything. And I got really lucky. I actually bought this from a seller that sold me two, I'm actually recording on one right now as we speak, sold me two for about $300, I think it was, which is an incredible deal, and I'm still super thankful for that. 
Now, in terms of brands, guys, I wanna talk quickly about the SD card brands. As you'll notice, I have a lot of brands. I'm not necessarily you know, loyal to one specific brand. I've tested many different brands. SanDisk is obviously great, but they're quite pricey. Uh, the Jingu, like I said, I've just kind of just got them for the CF Express card, so I, don't, I can't really say much about them. But so far, I've used them for over seven months. I've never had an issue, never had a concern. It has been fantastic. It's honestly been a breeze, guys. Really great uh, cards. The Kingston is another very popular brand. Uh, Freetail Evoke Pro, another very popular brand. These, these guys are very affordable. You guys have probably heard of Prograde. Prograde are fantastic as well, guys. This is another V90 card. And this one, guys, you can honestly, let me see if I get this in focus. You can pick this one up again for a few hundred dollars, guys, but it is super worth it. If you look at the Sony Tough cards and how much they go for, they are not cheap by any means, guys. And then the last one I have is the AV Pro SD. Again, I've never had issues with any of these cards, guys. But I will mention one card that isn't on here, and that is the Lexa. Uh, 1,000 times and the 2,000 fouls cards. I've had issues where they have failed on me and I've never had them work again. So I said after that happened, I'll never go Lexa again. I'm sorry, Lexa. I'm happy to maybe try it again, but honestly, I just lost complete trust. It's like when you have something one time and you have this food and it makes you feel sick and you never want to eat it again. That's sort of the kind of feeling I have with Lexa. So very, very disappointing. And for my card case, if you guys are wondering, it's JJC. It's very affordable. You can pick this up on Amazon for about $20. It is fantastic, guys. I really do love it. And the thing I love about it is it does fit my CF Express Type A cards in and regular SD cards in as well. I did buy a different one of this, so just be mindful, guys. There is another one where you can put um, micro SD cards as well, but because I don't have a lot of micro SD cards, or if I do, I just use the adapter so it acts as a SD card as well. But that's pretty much the video, guys. So what did I kind of take away from this? For most of the cameras from the Sony line, whether you use the a7 IV, um, you know, the, the a7S III, uh, the FX3, the FX30, the a7R5, as long as you're not needing necessarily the high uh, frame rates, such as 60p and 120, honestly, guys, if you're doing like the talking head videos, interview setup, stuff like that, the, the 520... Uh, the 512 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme Pro or any V30 card will serve you absolutely amazing. If you guys do need the 60p, that's when I would highly recommend a uh, 50 or 60p frame rate. That's when I would recommend something like the V60 card. If you do want to film in 100p or 120 or you need um, that kind of frame rate, go the V90. And if you want to use the all eye and utilize every single feature there is available, even the 8K, I would get the CF Express Type A cards, which again, you can find affordable ones now. ProGrade, I'm pretty sure, came out with one as well. So you don't have to go necessarily the Sony Tough Grade route or go the SanDisk, which can be pretty pricey. There are great branding options available for you guys. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please leave it a big like. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll be more than happy to answer them. As always, I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay safe and be well.